What's good, my YouTube connoisseur? It's your boy, the Bearded Sage, aka TBS, and I ain't talking no bullshit when I say we're back with another fire reaction. Before we even get started in the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot, and I very much appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Don't bring nobody over my house. I brought you into this world. I can take you out. Capiche? Yes, yes ma'am. Demon timing. Hello? Nigga, pull up. Shout out to Devante. Growing up, my parents always made it known that I was a good kid. And I agree with them to a certain extent because even though I was a good kid, behind closed doors, I did things that they didn't condone. So as I got older, especially the more they watched my videos, the more they started to see that I was not just a good kid, but a good kid with bad intentions. Let me show you why. So I remember back when I was 18 and there was this period of time that my little sister did gymnastics. And during her time in gymnastics, she had competitions that she would go to and they'd happen on a specific date of the month and would last for about a day. So why is this important to the story? Well, every competition was located in a city far away which means my parents would be gone for about two to three days max, leaving their house in the hands of their trusted sons, me and my brother. See, that's where they messed up because they didn't know us well enough to know that we was going to do something stupid. Back whenever I got the chance to do stupid stuff, I rarely did them. But whenever I did, I didn't go to the fullest extent of my stupidity. Why? Because I was paranoid. I always knew in the back of my mind that what I was doing was going to come with some consequences. So while in the act of my stupidity, I would think two steps ahead of everybody while having fun at the same time, of course. I oh God, that's me. I'm the most paranoid person there is. If I'm out somewhere, I'm always looking around, checking my surroundings. You got to keep your head on the swivel out here. You cannot drop your guard for one second. <laughs> but I ain't never been left at the house that long. Two, three days. No, that never happened. I only made those risky decisions because I knew that they were the perfect opportunities and I didn't want to let them go to waste. And my whole thought process back then was certain opportunities were like windows. You got to jump through them before they close. Okay. But in my case, this wasn't just an opportunity. It was just pure disobedience. My brother, though, was the exact opposite because whatever the occasion, he'd go all gas, no brakes. So as soon as my oh, sister don't. told us that she had a competition, we turned into Shisui and Itachi, planned ahead, and didn't tell us all. So fast forward. Oh, yeah, they was on demon timing to the day of and right before my parents were about to leave they were like don't bring nobody over my house i brought you into this world i can take you out capiche yes, yes ma'am didn't even hesitate hello nigga pull up we gonna have all the hoes the alcohols and all the magic pixie sticks the nigga can ask yes, for. Sir. You for real? less talking more driving nah like for real like i'm trying to get some confirmation here like are we bringing these things <laughs> yes, nah, nigga. Bro, I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> oh. Pull up though. So all my homies pull up later that night, and I made it known to everybody that this ain't gonna be no house party. It's just gonna be us. Cause one, I didn't want nobody to break nothing, or I'd have to break my foot off in their anus. That's rule two, number one. I had a racist neighbor two houses down that would not hesitate to file a complaint or call the 50. And you got me fricked up if you think I'm finna pull a NWA. It's just gonna be a little bro night. We gonna blast some loud music, play some video games, and eat ungodly amounts of- Nothing wrong with a little bro night, you feel me? You know? Something light. Something light. But I can already tell what's about to happen. And you know too, if you ever been in this situation. Food with some money we most likely don't have. And we just gonna have some fun. So basically a sausage fest. See, and that's the thing. <laughs> After a good couple of hours of fun, niggas started to really digest the fact that this was the perfect opportunity to bring women. Bro, I had to listen to niggas talking about some, ah, where's the hose? Ah, ah, what my where the hose at? Ah, ah, where's the weed? <sighs> But I digress. You see, whenever it was just my OG members at the time and myself hanging out, we knew how to just have fun for a long time without having to add in moment enhancers, you know, like women or drugs or alcohol, you know, nothing crazy, just a vibe. But when that period of time expired, the situation always turned into a double-edged sword whenever we would add in moment enhancers. Let's take one we struggled with the most being when we brought women. Why? Because a lot of people in our group would change the way they acted when women were around just to impress 
suppress them, including myself at the time, which I don't do anymore, which that is stupid, that's for goofies. And this ultimately helped us or hurt us, both in a negative way, because that's what you call <laughs> being fake. Fellas, be yourself. It's way more attractive to women when you're being yourself than being someone you're not to impress them. And if they don't like you for you, then move on. <clears throat> From the streets true. did she emerge, and the streets she shall return. Now I gotta throw into the oxygen that me and my brother were feared by almost everybody in the group, and we were even told that to our faces because unlike everybody else that changed the way they acted, he and I mastered the art of the F boy, which got a lot of females despite not being the most attractive in a lot of people's eyes. Mostly because I didn't want a relationship back then. Yes, I was for the streets. Not today, but I was back then. From the streets, I emerged. And the streets, I shall not return. Yes, Amen. I have standards now. But Amen. you feel me like, hey, don't let that female track record fool you though. I will sit down and whoop your assets at some Super Smash Bros, sing my anime song to the tip top of my lungs, play my PC and console games until you can see my bones through my fingers, and will still have masculinity and confidence to get women. So that's what we did. A couple of us each called up a girl of our choice because we made the hey. executive decision to have yeah. other intentions that night. Yeah. If you know, you know. Be and fine. sadly, the only girl that yeah. came was the girl I told to slide. But not in the way that I thought she would pull up because she brought a friend, and this was not just any friend that pulled up with her. <laughs> This was a friend that none of us liked. Why? Because we had our reasons. Number one. Bruh, females always have that one friend. That one friend that can't get a man. She always in her other friend business. Wake up, ladies. Wake up, man. Based off of what I've heard and seen with my own eyes, in my opinion, this girl has got to be one of the most ignorant people I have ever seen in my life, even to this day. Yeah, I've seen her in the election day line waiting, but I ain't say nothing because I don't frick with her like that. And my brother told me that he ran into her at his job a couple weeks ago, and the words that just came out her mouth was just utter stupid. I honestly think she had a couple missing wires, maybe some screws loose in her head. I, I don't know. Like, have you ever been? around that one person that every time they speak the words that come out their mouth just makes no sense like their presence just gives you a headache bro if she was close to the edge and trying not to lose her head i'm pushing her and i'm acting like i'm blind the next second grandmaster flash energy number two she was crazy and annoying when you pissed her off she would make the biggest of scenes i like i know i'm extra but this girl was extra extra i like to be low-key i like to be in the cut I hate people that like to make a scene, man. She was the type of person to constantly get you it's in the so bad annoying. situations. And I ain't want no part of that. Especially not in my parents' house. Because if she would have broke something or made a huge scene disturbing the neighbors, causing me to get in trouble more than I already was, then... Hey, yo, Chris. All right, so we're going to call the girl I told to slide the Wait a brain. minute. Wait a minute. Was that Chris Breezy? Hold on. Hold on. I got to take it back. Hold on something or made a huge scene disturbing the neighbors causing me to get in trouble more than I already was then hey yo Chris that man pulled out Chris breathing. all right so we're gonna call the girl I told to slide the brain and her psychotic friend pinky they both walk in and without hesitation they wanted excitement which we provided for a good drop down in the comments if you used to watch pinky and the brain the two little rats I used to love that cartoon show used to come on on WB on Saturdays had to get up early as fuck just to catch it. But that didn't last long because like I said, I didn't want to go to the fullest extent of my stupidity by making this gathering a party and potentially cause severe chaos, even though I had other intentions for them coming over that night. They wasn't really rocking with that, nor should I have cared, but seeing as I'm already in the moment of my stupidity, there wasn't no turning back at that point, and we had to make do with what we had and who we had there. Me and my brother had to find some ways to keep the fun alive, and after some time, everybody else went upstairs, leaving me, my brother, and those two downstairs. And I think they noticed it, because it got to a point where Pinky decided to test me and my brother's gangster, telling us we won't do this, we too pussy to do that. You know, the hype and peer pressure to potentially get us to do something that she felt would be the highlight of the night. And I gotta admit it, me and my brother were taking the bait like dummies. So, Pinky jumps to the point. Bro, look at her face. 
That's the thumbnail right there. That's the thumbnail. And was like, I know what y'all won't do. I bet y'all won't whip y'all meat out right now. Oh God. You got to. I mean, that you got to. You got to whip the meat out. But you got to make. Never mind. This YouTube. <clears throat> Never mind. This YouTube. This YouTube. What was our intentions for them anyway? Just, you know, in private. That caught me all the way off guard because I wasn't expecting that. Like, Bro, I'm bold, but I ain't that bold. I'm a wholesome man. I was thinking, like, what is this? A hibachi restaurant? Like, can I take one of y'all and do this in private, maybe? There are other dudes here. That's sus. Like, what's in it for me? What do I get out of this? Exactly. Are you going to go to the store and, and buy some knee pads real quick? Like, my meat is sacred. You can't just order this off the menu and expect it on your plate in front of everybody. She going to have Tell to order King. this meat off of Amazon Prime in a box. Let them know, King. The porch the next day. Let them know. So, I hesitated. But my brother did the exact opposite. Because before I made up my decision, he whipped it out in front of everybody at the speed of life. Man, he was on demon time, man. <laughs> Bruh, I turned my head so fast in the opposite direction, you thought I would have had a crick in my neck. And I'm looking out the side of my eye at the girls, and they were both staring at him like he's a, a championship trophy. Like, I'm surprised their mouths wasn't watering the way they was looking at him. And I think they forgot I existed, so I, I ain't really have to do nothing at that point, which I was completely fine with. I even saw Eric walk down the stairs, and he was like, I am disgusted and yeah, instantly no. turned back while i'm over here about to puke out my ears for me it was definitely the most horrifying highlight of the night but can't say that as much for the girls though did anything happen with the girls and us that night nope did i care enough to try after no coochie was not that important so after some time they left and we all awkwardly finished the night playing some ninja storm 4. Yes, i'm gonna say though this double-edged sword didn't really help us get anything and it definitely hurt my I'm eyes sure go hey, check them out at least Instagram. he did the job for me that man was bold <laughs> Had I had a couple more seconds, I probably would have gave into the prayer pressure and been bold too. Moral of the story, watch who you put your trust in because they might be the same ones breaking that trust behind your back and will never tell you. Also, don't give into peer pressure. That just means people are trying to control you and make you do something that you most likely don't want to do that's not in your morals. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody, regardless of what they call you for not doing what they pressured you to do. Be yourself and stand by your morals. Don't do nothing out of your character just to make Make somebody else happy. Oh. Preach, King. Preach. I gotta keep a pop yeah. Well, that's the end of the video. Thank you all for watching to the end. Hmm. Let me see. I'm trying to think of a question of the day. I ain't got nothing. Uh, have you ever been in this situation? Let me know in the comments down below. Have you ever had to, you know, prove yourself to a female when she called you out? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Again, I'm out. Yeah.